Hello to everyone. I am Iraklis uh, Katsadouris. I work uh, in uh, the National Documentation Center of Greece. And I welcome you all here in the Triple Open Science Training Series. This is the 10th webinar of the series. Uh, it's, its title is uh, Multilingual Vocabularies for the SSH. Uh, these uh, webinars are organized by work package six of uh, the triple project, but this one is co-organized with work package eight, and it's going to be a synergy of the triple project and the SOC uh, project. It will be devoted especially to the creation, use, and management of controlled vocabularies in the social sciences and humanities, SSH as we call it. Uh, by vocabularies, uh, we mean organized arrangements of words and phrases which are used to annotate, index, and retrieve content through browsing or, or searching. And since uh, multilingualism is an essential feature of the SSH, this is uh, why multilingual vocabularies in SSH are greatly needed. <clears throat> Some info for this uh, webinar. I want to inform you all that this session will be recorded and made available afterwards. You can keep an eye on the training events page of the Triple website. You can see it here. Uh, you can, uh, we will have a Q&A session at the end. You can place your questions on the Q&A section or in the chat, preferably in the Q&A. Uh, your questions are more than welcome. Please send them uh, during the webinar, I will take care as a moderator and uh, I will take care of collecting them and presenting to our speakers. Now, as uh, I said at the beginning, this is a webinar of a training series. The next event is uh, the Pundit Annotation <coughs> tool. It will be on the uh, 11th of May. Uh, it's Wednesday and it's the same time, uh, two Central European time. Now, uh, in order to have uh, some uh, feedback, to collect feedback of this training, uh, please, uh, you can feel uh, at uh, the end of the event in the, this post training survey in the uh, Mentimeter. Here you can see um, uh, the, the address uh, that uh, you can follow, and this is the goal, the code. Uh, you can note it down now, but uh, later on, uh, at the end of the webinar, uh, you will find it in the chat. Now, uh, we are going to have three presentations. First of all, uh, uh, we'll begin with uh, Nikos uh, Vasilogambrakis, my colleague from EKD, who is going to uh, present um, uh, some things about SSH vocabularies. What, what are they? Uh, why are they important? What is their uh, use? And um, then uh, I will move on with uh, presenting a case of uh, creating a multilingual SSH vocabulary. Uh, unfortunately, my colleague Harris Georgiadis, who is in uh, charge of this task of uh, Go Triple Task 2.4, can join us today, something unexpected uh, happened to him. So I will uh, try to replace him. And at the end, uh, Dan Broder will uh, present us uh, some uh, issues about uh, management needs of uh, vocabularies in the SSH since there is a large variety of vocabularies in the field. How? Can we build an interoperable infrastructure for vocabularies? Uh, will present us the mainly the work that has been uh, has taken place in SOC project. Uh, so I will stop sharing my screen and I will give the floor to my colleague Nikos uh, Nikos Masdogavrakis. Nikos holds a BA in classical philology from the University of Crete and an MA in librarianship from the University of Selfield. He is here with us in EKD the last 10 years, and he has been working at the, uh, at, uh, as a metadata specialist, occupied primarily with library systems, usability, and services, documentation, 
schema modeling, data migration, uh, curation, and semantic enrichment projects. So, uh, Nikos, the floor is yours. Uh, thanks very much, Raklis. Uh, so, uh, we'll begin with uh, vocabularies, a definition of vocabularies. What is, uh, what are they? So, adopting harping uh, uh, definition, uh, we speak uh, about an information tool that contains uh, standardized words and phrases used to refer to ideas, physical characteristics, people, places, events, subject matter, and many other concepts. So, we speak about uh, uh, most of all standardized terms that makes a vocabulary controlled. Um, so, they do not intend to, to include, uh, for example, uh, natural language terms. These terms are concepts uh, that are most of all linked to each other uh, with a series of relationships, uh, bringing up a whole network of concepts together. Vocabularies can be uh, either domain-based, uh, domain like uh, geonames, uh, AAT, MESH, uh, and others, or be uh, domain-agnostic, uh, that is to be more generic and abstract, like UNESCO, uh, DDC, uh, Library of Congress subject, uh, subject headings, etc. Uh, now, the, the vocabulary structure, they are conceptually based and uh, sometimes alphabetically as well. They're relationship based. This is either uh, hierarchical, for example, European history is a broad term of Greek history or French history. Equivalence relationships, usually from different vocabularies and point to the same entity, uh, such as Picasso and Biaf has an exact match uh, with Picasso and Wikidata. And uh, associative relationships uh, that refer to different entities. Uh, here we have uh, actually related entities, such as version of additional works, uh, different uh, different people that have uh, a special relationship, like John is the husband of Mary, for example. Um, here we have an example of uh, the term "camas painting" to the uh, arts and architecture thesaurus online from the Getty Institute, uh, where in the first set of terms are listed multilingual versions of the term. Uh, we have an equivalence uh, relationship, uh, and all these terms lead back to, to the preferred uh, version of the term. And the set below, we, uh, we get the position of the preferred term in the vocabulary hierarchy. Uh, another example is uh, from uh, the NASA thesaurus, where we have uh, an associative relationship under the related term. Uh, uh, the preferred term is uh, microburst, and we have related terms such as aviation, meteorology, flight hazards, thunderstorms, vertical currents, wind shear, um, which basically relates the concepts, uh, the concept microburst to those of aviation, etc., etc. Uh, so these concepts are completely different uh, to different entities. Uh, what specifically uh, categories, uh, vocabulary index, uh, vocabulary indexes? Uh, first of all, we can have type, for example, original source like a book or a letter, a material uh, like marble, um, like a sculpture is made of marble, subject, of course, uh, which is subdivided in topical, uh, spatial, and temporal. Uh, we can have agents, uh, that is either um, personal names uh, or uh, corporate names. Uh, we can have creators or either uh, contributors. And uh, possibly we can have also any domain category, uh, specific category like uh, the, uh, the previous referred NASA thesaurus but especially is for astrophysics and aeronautics. The vocabulary types, uh, usually we have uh, this kind of categories for, for vocabularies like authority headings, 
uh, which is uh, characterized by subdivisions like the Li Library of Congress uh, subject headings, controlled, controlled list with uh, no embedded relations is uh, just simple unique terms with no, no complexity. Uh, taxonomies and classification systems that basically um, have used libraries uh, for a hierarchical and physical uh, hierarchical structure and physical tracking of the material. Thesauri uh, with with many relationships uh, relationships showing synonymy and autonomy. Uh, of course, dictionaries is another uh, uh, another type of vocabulary. And ontologies, uh, can one uh, uh, argue that it may be uh, a special vocabulary, a meta vocabulary, which defines abstract concepts, concepts of the domain uh, that links to each other with semantic relationships. So ontology may serve as, as a basis for, for constructing a vocabulary. Uh, why uh, they are usable? Um, why we bother with uh, vocabularies? First of all, it's uh, a perfect documentation description tool for uh, uh, galleries, libraries, archives, and museums. It serves as a hom homogenization of concepts so that we have standardized uh, concepts, Homer and not Homerus. Um, they are uh, they embed a common structural language, which, uh, which is a scheme, otherwise called a schema or an ontology. And they are flexible enough. They are multilingual. They, they can be multilingual. They have various types of relationships. They are hier uh, hierarchical or, uh, uh, horizontal, or, or horizontally structured and are very simple to use. Uh, all this together brings up vocabulary's ultimate goal, which is the discoverability of uh, resources. Uh, so different library users perform different queries uh, to, to, library, to a library opac, like uh, bring me history books or what, uh, uh, what are Shakespeare's titles. Um, and uh, thanks to vocabularies that uh, link to, to the resources queried, we have uh, the, uh, the result of um, uh, discoverability. Uh, here we have a, a screenshot from the search culture uh, aggregator of act, um, where in the left menu we see the vocabulary terms with the resources indexed to each term, and on the right we get the results that the system brings back after clicking on a special term uh, like Egypt. Um, here, the screenshot is taken from uh, the beta um, side of Go Triple, uh, the, the beta side of the project. Uh, we have uh, the keyword, actually, the, key, uh, the implemented keyword vocabulary translated in each of the eight languages of, of the pro project. So, every time that a user picks up a language keyword, uh, the picks up a language, sorry, uh, a keyword is uh, automatically translated and apply according to that language. Uh, just to make a slight reference here to the importance of the intrusion of uh, linked open data to the vocabulary world, the innovation of uh, LOD is the dynamics of linking one object to another in a semantically unique way in the semantic web. So uh, enabling the interconnection of objects uh, from uh, one object to, to the other. Uh, in the example, uh, for, uh, for example, here we learn uh, in the picture, we learn at the same time about both, both Bob's friends, which is Alice and Bob's interest, that is Mona Lisa. Um, LOD, among others, are fully compliable to, to the FAIR principles, uh, which is add value to data discoverability and re uh, reusability as well. Uh, a more uh, specific example to, to understand the usability of uh, an LOD vocabulary is here the example of Pablo Picasso, uh, which is the core entity uh, having multilingual in instances in the three uh, vocabularies Wikidata, Dpedia, and VAF. 
To this uniquely identifiable entity, they refer the Greek National uh, Library, uh, sorry, Gallery, the British Library and the Reina Sophia Museum. And because Picasso record has a direct creator relationship to his painting Guernica, all three organizations have an indirect, indirect link to, to Guernica as well, hence, uh, has, hence the, 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 the dash tarot. Finally, this is a graphical visualization of the concept uh, Stone Age in the LOD dictionary bubble net and the variety of concepts that are linked to it, like uh, Ethiopia, Africa, Bronze Age, archaeology, which is further linked with, uh, to cultural anthropology, which brings us back to the conceptual, to the whole conceptual network of LOD and the continuous browsing from one concept to the other. Uh, that was all for, for me. Thank you very much. And I give the uh, word back to, to Iraklis. Thank you, Nico. I'm going to present what has been done in uh, uh, task 2.4, which is the task for creating the, the Go triple uh, vocabulary. But before that, and since I think that there are uh, many participants who are not involved in the triple project, I will make a very short introduction. Uh, the triple project was launched in the 1st of October of 2019, and is, it is financed by the Horizon 2020 framework of the European uh, uh, Commission. Now, uh, the triple project, the heart of the triple project is the Go Triple Discovery Platform. The Go Triple Discovery Platform is going to be an innovative, multi multilingual, and multicultural platform which is going to be uh, dedicated to uh, the social sciences and humanities. Uh, it's going to be a single access point to explore, find access and reuse materials at the European scale as uh, one of the dedicated services of uh, OPERAS. OPERAS is the research infrastructure that supports open scholarly communication in the social sciences and humanities in Europe. And it's going to be an SSH service of, of FIOS. Now, the main goals are the, the main goal is the over to overcome, to help and overcome the fragmentation of, that there is uh, in SSH research. And it uh, will uh, it can achieve this goal by uh, ensuring explorability, findability, accessibility, and reusability of SSH resources. Uh, resources. Uh, it can uh, develop innovative tools to support the whole research cycle. It will foster inter interdisciplinary and cross-cultural collaboration, support scientific, industrial, and societal application of SSH, and increase economic and socio societal, societal impact of SSH resources. Now, um, the, the creation of of the Go Triple vocabulary is the subject of uh, task 2.4, which um, uh, task 2.4 is a task of uh, work packets to do. Now the, 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 the main idea here is uh, uh, multilingualism, which I referred to in uh, the previous slide. Now the aim of work packets to is to achieve the, the data acquisition of triple plat platform by coordinating efficiently with data providers and to assume high quality indexation of content in the languages that are represented in the triple pl platform. They are nine, uh, but they are increasing. So uh, the, the aim of this task 2.4 is to develop a relatively large vocabulary, vocabulary based on existing ones. And it's going to support the annotation service. This is uh, something important to say. The, the aim was not to develop a vocabulary from, from scratch, but a vocabulary that um, could be uh, uh, used for the annotation service of the Go, uh, uh, of the Go Triple Platform. 
Now, uh, the, the annotation service is a metadata enrichment mechanism, which uh, when given in a vocabulary, uh, the triple vocabulary in this case, it inspects specific metadata fields of an item, such as the subject, the abstract, or the title, in order to identify terms of the vocabulary. It assigns the, UR, the URI of the term and tags the item with all the labels of that term in all the available languages. Uh, these labels are subject to indexing, so the item is more searchable since it will be returned in, in the results when a user a search contains any of these labels of uh, this uh, language. So in order for, for the annotation mechanism to be effective, the vocabulary must, uh, the go triple vocabulary must contain a sufficient number of concepts. And at the same time, these concepts must have labels in as many of these uh, languages, the language that will be represented in the Go, plat uh, in the go triple platform in as many of these languages as possible. There is a, 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 a distinction between classification and annotation. Uh, the aim of the task 2.3 is to facilitate a strict classification of the resources of the Go platform according to, to, Morris, uh, to Morris categories. But um, the aim of task 2.4 is to develop a multilingual SSH vocabulary, which, as I said, uh, will be used for annotating, for tagging the publication. Now, <clears throat> why is this needed? By annotating a publication in one of these nine languages, uh, the item or the metadata makes it more searchable for the audiences that speak any of the other languages. Now, let's see an example. The Go Triple Platform uh, will uh, harvest um, uh, content and the metadata from, uh, from other providers. So. Uh, if uh, an item or a metadata is indexed uh, in the index uh, sociology, let's say, in English, <clears throat> uh, the vocabulary will annotate, will co co correlate, sorry, this, uh, uh, this concept, uh, sociology, to um, the same concepts uh, in all the other languages that are represented in the Go triple platform. Uh, I mean that this uh, term sociology will be correlated to sociology in Greek, kinoniologia, to sociology in Italian, in French. And so uh, when a user uh, tries to find um, something under the keyword sociology, all the other, uh, he will be able to find all the other uh, terms to that tagged as uh, sociology in the other languages. Uh, also, the publication uh, is enriched, enriched with links that help in the disambiguation of the term and increase its uh, semantic interoperability. Now, um, this in, in order for this uh, vocabulary to be to be constructed, we can say that. Uh, I, uh, we used, we took three, three steps. Uh, the first was to, to gather existing vocabularies and thesauri in the social sciences and humanities. Uh, after the evaluation uh, of all the members that worked on this uh, task, it was decided that the best candidate to use as a, as a subset, as, as a basis for the creation of new vocabularies uh, was the Library of Congress subject headings. Now, uh, for this uh, decision, it was taken into consideration, it was taken into account that the LCSH is one of the most popular and authoritative vocabularies. It contains a very large number of concepts from which uh, we could select the most common uh, for, from the social uh, science and humanities. And that also there are existing mappings uh, from national vocabularies to the LCSA. So uh, after that, uh, 14, uh, 14, as you see, basic concepts were uh, identified uh, from uh, the Frascati taxonomy, which were under the 
uh, SSH in in uh, the uh, LCSH. Based on these on these uh, fourteen basic concepts, uh, 30, um, thirty-seven broad concepts from LCSH uh, were identified as uh, a next step. For each of these, uh, we used the linked data API of the Library of Congress and uh, retrieved their scores representation. So for each one of them, uh, we followed the scores and our property in order to extract, uh, to extract their children in scores. So we, we went a, a step down, uh, let's say, from the basic concepts, um, we found um, uh, their children. So we ended up with uh, having, uh, as you see, 2,513 concepts. Now, but uh, we needed uh, to uh, further increase the, the multilingualism of uh, the vocabulary. And for that, we, uh, we did three, three things. First, we uh, followed uh, links to, um, to, to, the L to the LCSH. After that, uh, we followed the links for, I mean, we followed the links for, to LCSH, uh, from LCSH to other uh, national um, uh, libraries uh, in order to correlate um, uh, terms from, uh, and concepts from the LCSH to existing uh, concepts in national vocabularies are the French vocabulary, as the French vocabulary of the Italian uh, library, sorry. Uh, then we followed the links to Wikidata uh, by extracting labels in, var in various languages and by ingesting existing mappings from uh, national vocabularies, the French and the Italian, uh, for example. Uh, the, the results uh, were not uh, very, were good, but not very good after these steps. So uh, in order to achieve uh, that, uh, we used an automatic uh, translation, uh, um, a Google translation to produce uh, missing labels. But as uh, you may know, this uh, Google translation are not very reliable, so the result uh, were curated by partners. These are the, the spreadsheets that were created for each of the languages, except from English, of course, because the terms of uh, LCSH are in English. So uh, these, uh, these, uh, these were the terms and these were the translations. In some cases, we had uh, two, um, uh, two possible translations. Uh, so um, a, a member of the triple uh, project curated this translation. We can see here if uh, he or she agreed with one of these translations, he or she ticked uh, this, this box. If none of these two translations was valid, then um, the person who did the curation could propose another. Uh, translation that uh, he or she thought it would be suitable. So after that, uh, we had, a uh, we think, a, a very good coverage of terms. This is, we see here, uh, the coverage before the uh, automatic translation and the curation, and this is after the automatic uh, uh, translation and the curation. So we see that for uh, some languages, the the coverage percentage was good enough, as we see for French uh, and we could say uh, German, but the percentage of coverage raised significantly after the, um, the automated translation and the curation of the partners, as we see here, it was for most uh, countries around 90% and more. Um, so uh, this is the the work that uh, uh, was done for for creating the Go Triple vocabulary. The Go Triple vocabulary is now is now out. It's hosted in a platform that is developed by EKT, the Semantics.gr, uh, and my uh, colleague uh, Nikos can uh, demonstrate, you know, and see. Uh, a few things about uh, the Go Triple vocabulary and how 
uh, someone, you know, navigating in this. So thank you, and I will uh, give the floor to, to Nick. Well, this is um, the landing page of uh, the semantics.gr. It's a state-of-the-art infrastructure that is being developed by ECT to support the development, curation, interlinking, and publishing of vocabularies as linked open data. The service is available to any trustworthy entity that wishes to publish the, uh, their vocabularies using either an API uh, of the platform uh, and the provided uh, vocabularies for documentation and classification purposes. Uh, so, um, with semantics, uh, we had the opportunity to publish the Go Triple uh, vocabulary. Um, uh, as you can see, uh, the, vo the vocabulary is, uh, uh, is actually available, uh, is open and available for download uh, with this link here. Uh, so, if we click here, we, uh, we, we see the whole vocabulary in RDFXML. It's still working, but it's, it's okay now. So, uh, here you can download the whole vocabulary in RDFXML. And just to, uh, to show um, uh, little things about the vocabulary, we have uh, the core uh, concepts, uh, like Rakhli said before, uh, like anthropology, civilization, classical antiquities. We have their children. For example, if we click on the plus here, we, we get uh, anthropologist children. And furthermore, uh, we don't have grandchildren for all concepts, but we have here further children for archaeology so if we click plus we get the grandchildren of um, what was that anthropology and the children of uh, archaeology so um, every single concept is uh, is also available in rdfxml uh, just to to see a bit uh, we have uh, the rdfxml view of uh, the concept uh, based on uh, the score schema. Uh, uh, here we have uh, uh, the many pre uh, preferred labels um, according to, to each language. So, and uh, with the XML attribute, uh, we define the language each time. We have uh, uh, object properties like close match, um, exact match that we refer to to other uh, concepts uh, uh, inside or outside uh, our uh, vocabulary. So we close that, and uh, we can also view just how it looks uh, a concept in its own page. Uh, we have the, mul the multilingual uh, versions of uh, the term. We have the alternative labels. We have the broader terms, the close matches, the exact matches. And if we want to edit further or enrich a term, we can edit the form and we can add uh, some other languages uh, if, if we know other uh, translations, we can uh, add uh, language, uh, other language labels as well, uh, or we can uh, add uh, more narrow terms, related concepts, etc., etc. So this is uh, how the vocabulary looks like in the, through the, the semantics platform. Okay, Raklis. Uh, so now it's. Okay, thank you, thank you, Nicola. Uh, so now it's uh, a Dan's turn. Dan uh, has a background in engineering and signal processing, and has a long career working on research infrastructure, especially clearing, working in different capacities at different clearing centers, and he has been has been managing tasks in European and national projects such as for the archiving and metadata related work and 
MPI for psycholinguistics, the LA unit, for which he was the CTO and brother in the Clarin, DASIS, UDAT, and Parthenos project. He was convener for ISO standards on metadata and persistent identifiers, and he's involved in proposals for new EOSC infrastructure components. Currently, he's affiliated with Clarin Eric and leads a work package in the SOC project. And before I leave you the floor, Dan, just to say that uh, the answers, thank you, very, oh, the, thank you very much for the questions, for your questions, and it, uh, they will be all answered in the end. Let's hope we don't need them and that the audience themselves will have enough questions for us. Okay, so, thank Dan. you, Eric, please, for uh, introducing, mm -hmm. but also for inviting me, of course. So good afternoon. Um, I offer this presentation as a result and uh, also of uh, still plans uh, uh, for vocabulary creation and, and management infrastructure in the shop project. Uh, for this slide deck, I collaborated with my colleague, uh, Monica Monaccini, who uh, was uh, uh, responsible for a task uh, about uh, machine translation for uh, vocabularies. So the shock project is the other big project in the uh, social sciences and humanities. Um, in shock, all the SSH landmarks and projects and many of the landmarks affiliates uh, collaborate. Main objectives are um, creating the SSH part of EOSC. You will have heard of EOSC. If not, uh, it will be still, it will be mentioned. Um, and establishing an appropriate governance uh, for that SSH part. Also optimizing and reuse uh, through uh, application of the FAIR principles, so standards and, and uh, uh, semantic techniques, interconnecting as existing of uh, uh, new infrastructures. Contrary to triple, um, shock has very many tasks, very many activities and uh, uh, so we also deal with uh, many different uh, vocabularies and uh, not just one. This, this, how do you say, induces a bit of a different perspective of what's needed for, uh, for the management. Okay. Um, with respect to uh, the diversity uh, of, uh, of uh, uh, vocabularies in the SSH. I think it has a lot to do that uh, in, the in the SSH, uh, there is a wide variety of data types of uh, sub-community specifics of schools of thought. And there are also uh, divergent purposes and uh, also available effort. If you have much effort available, you can allow yourself to take some more time for metadating or annotating uh, a resource than when it has to happen in just five minutes. So, but I think it's important to notice that uh, suitable well-crafted vocabularies are essential when we want accurate descriptions and classifications and that we can counter that way inter what I call interpretive fakeness. So reducing ambiguity. This will all lead to more efficient information retrieval. So I think I will skip through this uh, uh, quickly. Uh, much of it has already been uh, addressed, I think in the first presentation. Let me just state that uh, Although there is a wide variety of uh, structures and formats to describe uh, uh, vocabularies, we of course prefer the W3C variants, uh, the formats there, uh, because they allow for easy machine uh, readability and actionability. So back to the, uh, to the shock project, originally, in the uh, shock work plan, we did not have a single activity dedicated to the um, vocabularies in the SSH. Originally, it was a limited effort. We would do an investigation if we could come to a common recommended platform for publishing and sharing vocabularies. And it was another uh, uh, task in, uh, that, that would uh, do uh, testing of machine translation for vocabularies. We'll get back to that later. Uh, but during the project, we uh, 
identified more opportunities and we kind of pulled some resources together to uh, try to have a synergetic uh, approach to uh, uh, to inventorize uh, uh, requirements and possible approaches so these uh, uh, requirements amount to for instance an inventory and registration of what we would consider uh, relevant SSH vocabularies, uh, recommendations for uh, further common approaches. So not only a vocabulary publication platform, but also look if we could come to recommendations for a vocabulary uh, authoring platform. And uh, yeah, we are uh, often dependent on uh, software development that are that's outside lies outside the project at hand. So uh, we would also like to represent the SSH interest when talking uh, with uh, other stakeholders, for instance, uh, software and service uh, providers. The importance of multilinguality. Uh, it has already been uh, mentioned, uh, but in our meetings with users, uh, it was uh, pointed out uh, several times that users are interested to having the opportunity to use, uh, for instance, deposit and search facilities uh, in their own language, not only in English. Uh, people that uh, uh, are, say, familiar with using English every day in their work often forget that, but English is not always, uh, we say, that well entrenched with some users group. So um, one of the things we concentrated on was translating uh, of uh, metadata, keywords, terminologies, yeah, and their definition. So to enable multilingual search and facilitate access. So multilingual metadata terms and vocabularies are meant to provide multilingual access to content across different languages, and they improve the discovery of resources and tools for the non-native English speakers. So I already spoke that we would do a test of using NLP for vocabulary translation. We uh, tried out a number of state-of-the-art terminology extraction and machine translation technologies uh, with a purpose to speed up and optimize the creation of multilingual vocabularies. The machine translation services we tested was Kuni MT, a service that is offered by one of the clearing services. Google Translate was already mentioned, but also DeepL and Reverso were tested. And we had two case studies. First, translating the clearing core metadata concepts. These are 230 concepts. And then also creating a terminology for data stewardship. Uh, translating into the same languages, I think, yeah. And uh, there we uh, came up uh, in the end with 210 domain-specific concepts that were automatically extracted from a uh, corpus of relevant uh, uh, data curation and stewardship documents. Now, this table... <laughs> Uh, reminds us of what was shown in the previous presentation, uh, not so strange. Uh, it uh, shows the results of the different uh, machine translation uh, technologies. And uh, what you can see is, or what we noticed anyway, is that uh, DeepL outperforms all the other uh, machine translation technology with Google Translate as a good Second, but still, I think, and that's a lesson, and it was also said in the previous presentation, human expertise is needed uh, to uh, check and improve the results. This is something that I suppose we will not escape. Um, note also that uh, the success of machine translation is very much uh, topic dependent. Uh, we had an other uh, task in our project, which had dealt with uh, 
job titles and uh, machine translations was also tried out for uh, job titles. And in that case, it seems to be such a specialized vocabulary that um, it failed immediately. So uh, you have to be sure if you plan to use machine translation uh, that the um, vocabulary is not too uh, specific. That there are plenty of examples for the uh, machine translation algorithms to, to learn from. Talking about infrastructure, we usually think of, uh, let's say, things that can improve vocabulary, visibility, and uh, discovery. Vocabularies are not always fair. Um, many are lying around or are still not, uh, uh, say, known. Uh, previous times, uh, it, uh, I think it was by uh, researchers telling each other that here is a nice vocabulary and it works excellently if you need to metadata or to annotate the uh, resources of a specific time. But the world has uh, grown and it's unscalable to rely on that. So uh, vocabularies should be fair. They need proper registration and publication so that researchers and infrastructure providers can discover and reuse these. Um, in this uh, context, I want to refer to the report for fair uh, semantic artifacts and vocabularies are semantic artifacts from the fair sphere project. At the end of this presentation, I have a slide with uh, links to uh, different sources and this is on that. So um, we need a SSH vocabulary catalog or a general one that supports sufficient uh, discipline specificity. For instance, Bartok.org is a very well known one. It has uh, about 3,300 entries, vocabularies, whereof I think about 1,200 uh, pertain to the SSH domain. What we also need is a vocabulary search function, one that searches in the vocabulary metadata but also in the vocabulary terms themselves. Usually the vocabulary metadata that's available is quite shallow. A uh, subject area is mentioned and maybe a description, but researchers often need more information. And uh, well, if you have 1200 SSH uh, vocabularies to choose from, um, it would be nice if you're also able to see what uh, terms are in those vocabularies. Find the right one. Note that providing optimal recommendations for researchers uh, can be complicated. It's not only a matter of searching in the metadata or in the vocabulary terms, but also aspects of context and what kind of project are you working or the user profile, what type of a researcher you are you play a role. Vocabulary is an interoperability. As I said, there are many, very many different uh, vocabularies from different sub-communities. And uh, yeah, for data reuse and data integration, uh, uh, we have to look at the interoperability of vocabularies. There is there the technical and format interoperability. Uh, SCOS and OWL are broadly accepted W3C languages. But as I already said, many projects still use spreadsheet and tables and they're locked in uh, software silos, uh, highly specialized software that manage these, uh, these tables. And also um, specific recommendations for vocabulary versioning are needed. They are not provided by SCOS and OWL, although you can build on SCOS and OWL to, uh, to, to uh, implement them but they are not shared by all uh, user communities. Next to the format interoperabilities, there's the matter of semantic interoperability. Uh, I mean, there are so many different uh, uh, vocabularies because 
be coming from different traditions, different organizations and projects can have developed different vocabularies to describe even the same similar data. So some process of normalization or conversion is needed. And uh, that can be an expensive uh, uh, undertaking because some of these vocabularies are pretty huge. In that uh, context, I want to refer to the Ariadna vocabulary matching tool, which is uh, a nice example of what you can achieve with a uh, visual user interface. Um, don't forget the cultural and the human interoperability with respect to uh, creating multilingual vocabularies. Uh, uh, you don't only need uh, machine translation technology, but you also need a network of human experts, experts that know the domain and that can tell you which translation fit and which don't fit. So um, yeah, we have, we have considered all these different uh, activities with vocabularies and try to discuss and come to uh, common proposals, common recommendations to manage uh, vocabularies. Uh, but it's not something that uh, can, that will be finished within the shop project itself. In fact, this month is the last month of the shop project. And uh, we are, we're sad for that, but uh, we are planning to keep some activities alive. The SSH open marketplace will come to mind, but also something that we call the SSH vocabulary comments, which is a uh, collaboration between the, uh, uh, the, the, the major uh, shop stakeholders which are the SSH research infrastructure. So SESTA, Clarin, Daria, and ARIES. And uh, we think that uh, it's quite useful to uh, continue our um, activities, uh, providing recommendations and creating infrastructures that uh, would uh, enable uh, a common collaborative use and management of vocabularies and uh, that uh, are able to put vocabularies forward as first class citizen, fair data objects in their own right next to uh, the data objects themselves. And of course, uh, although SHOCK is a pretty big uh, project, uh, there is still room for expansion, a wider scope for collaboration in the humanities. The national SSH projects come to mind Claria, Text Plus, uh, but also the triple project, which will still continue for a while. Priorities for the vocabulary comments are, well, operating a vocabulary repository for hosting the shock vocabulary results and maybe some orphaned SSH vocabularies. Not all useful SSH vocabularies have found a safe home. And uh, we would be happy to uh, accommodate them in the uh, vocabulary comments vocabulary repository. Um, next to that vocabulary recommendations. Um, so an SSH vocabulary overview of all the relevant SSH vocabularies. Vocabulary federated content search, deep search that also looks in the terms. And uh, using those two functionalities, we should be able to present uh, researchers with vocabulary recommendations for their particular purpose. Um, we have identified that there is a need for uh, recommendations for versioning of vocabularies. For instance, uh, when are you able to say that there is a new version of a vocabulary is that if one of the concepts in a vocabulary changes its semantics or is it if there is already a new translation for a concept available there are different opinions there also uh, the uh, versioning recommendation should support the management of the vocabularies that they are able to quickly find out what are the exact, exact differences between two versions of a vocabulary. 
uh, you can maybe do a diff on two files, but uh, that will not work. Um, another important aspect is API standardization. So to enable tools to interact smoothly with the different vocabulary platforms, for instance, predictive, predictive search is a big thing. I mean, you have a metadata annotation tool. You are typing in the first letters of a term that you know is in the metadata vocabulary. And then you want to have uh, the, uh, your first letter expanded uh, into uh, what uh, is available within the vocabulary. In this uh, context, uh, the Scosmos API seems to be a prime candidate. Scosmos is a popular um, vocabulary publication uh, and management tool. Uh, it has a API that's also implemented by other publication tools, but it's not accepted as a, uh, let's say, a wide standard, uh, but it is a prime candidate for us. And also, uh, continuing exchange with users and developers. So for instance, we recently had a meeting with the Cosmos developers from the National Finnish Library about possibilities of, uh, and development part of the Cosmos software. This is uh, our um, Cosmos instance uh, where we host the results of the uh, shock uh, project, the vocabularies from the shock project. You can see there, for instance, the data stewardship terminology, but also the multilingual metadata. And there are a few other results available, uh, vocabularies that are used in the uh, SSH open marketplace, but also of previous projects, the standard survival kit, uh, which was a result from the previous partners project. Uh, and well, the, uh, the number of uh, vocabularies will grow, I think. Going back to the vocabulary uh, recommendations, um, many vocabularies exist and are registered and published in, in uh, vocabulary registries. Uh, examples are schema.org. I already mentioned the Bartok vocabulary registry, but there are also things like uh, open metadata registries, which is the output of uh, some RDA work. Uh, but there are also many uh, thematic discipline specific registries. Bioportal is a good one. I have to say the biomed disciplines is, uh, let's say, is, uh, has been working very hard and has had good results with management platforms for vocabularies and ontologies. Uh, usually there is also plenty of uh, resources available uh, for this kind of work in their discipline. So um, organizations uh, use existing open software solutions or sometimes develop uh, special solutions if they have special uh, requirements. Uh, Cosmos is a uh, solution that's popular in the SSH for uh, publishing and hosting uh, vocabularies. It only supports uh, SCOS. Uh, there are many uh, Cosmos instances, uh, unexpected instances, and uh, they also function as small vocabulary registries, but they're not ideally suited for that work because they only allow you to browse over the different vocabularies that are host. Uh, but uh, something uh, like uh, a, a metadata search option is, is not available there. So to support the SSH vocabulary recommendations, we can use, uh, uh, we can think of using an existing registry, for instance, Bartok, or create our own instance. But I think we have to think of uh, the need for specific metadata, maybe, uh, Bartok does not support specific metadata for the SSH. Uh, support for searching in the vocabulary terms. Bartok has some support there, uh, but only if you at the uh, hosting site uh, also implement a specific service. And when you search, when you decide to use a large general registry, you also have to 
look at the recall versus precision issue. So uh, you do not want your SSH specific customers to be swamped by results uh, from, uh, from other disciplines that they cannot uh, uh, avoid, that they cannot filter out. So that's something to keep in mind. So we have been thinking about solutions there for vocabulary search. Um, we are considering two strategies there, the central one and the federated one. So the central one would rely on harvesting uh, the metadata from the different uh, vocabulary uh, publishing tools or services and uh, indexing that. Uh, also harvest then the content of those vocabularies and index that so that uh, at the central vocabulary search portal, users are able to search both through the metadata and the vocabulary content. The other option is uh, to um, yeah, create a, a federation of uh, vocabulary publishing services uh, that federation uh, could be created on the basis of uh, a series of SCOSMOS instances. SCOSMOS instances also expose a Sparkle endpoint. And uh, you could use that Sparkle endpoint, for instance, to do a federated content search of the different vocabularies that are hosted elsewhere. Uh, but uh, we have noticed that there are some performance problems if you have really big uh, vocabularies and uh, our talks with the uh, Cosmos developers uh, have led us to believe that this may not be a viable uh, way to go. The alternative is uh, the Bartok registry software. It offers a functionality that's called Bartok Fast which allows you to, uh, which implements a kind of federate, also a federated search option, uh, but you need to implement a special service at every uh, vocabulary uh, hosting site. And uh, well, the other option is build our own, but we are not uh, relishing that way. We believe in sharing and, and reusing as much as possible. And it would be, uh, let's say, very unfortunate if we had to build our own. We're quite ready in, uh, let's say, discussion with the, for instance, the Cosmos developers or Bartok developers to uh, help uh, for some small um, changes or configure, special configurations, but we are not looking to build our own registry software. And then, not to forget, uh, there is also an organizational and human aspect of vocabulary management. So true fo collaborative vocabulary management needs to support some other requirements. So if you collaborate about using sharing vocabularies, there is the thing of ownership. Uh, what does that mean ownership in a distributed uh, setup? Who has authority? Uh, also, vocabularies evolve. Uh, what are procedures for evolution and agreement on that evolution? Uh, new concepts are introduced, uh, concepts, uh, uh, semantic shift. Uh, you need to have an infrastructure to uh, discuss this and to make some decision. Uh, there is the matter of synchronization with source and target applications. Because until now, I have been presenting this from the perspective of the, the hosting uh, party, the hosting side, the hosting applications. But uh, of course, especially uh, SCOS formatted uh, vocabularies are often used uh, by tools and services that are used by end users. So uh, ideally uh, a user wants to adjust a vocabulary 
at the point of use when he is using, for instance, this metadata annotation tool or this metadata tool or annotation tool. So how to have a process that can initiate and authorize vocabulary updates from the user side. So we should not forget the organizational aspect of who owns, who can change, and who can create a new branch of a vocabulary. These should also be addressed. And I think that's the end of my presentation. Uh, the other slides uh, have links to some resources I mentioned. So the Clarion and Shock Vocabulary Initiative, it, uh, it lists uh, uh, interesting, uh, let's say, uh, meetings we had uh, about which uh, vocabulary platform would be suitable for uh, the common SSH. Uh, there are links to uh, the Bartok Org and the Bartok Federated Search, if you do not know about this yet. Uh, there's a link to the recommendations for fair semantic artifacts and a link to the Ariadne vocabulary matching tool, which is really nice. And if you uh, are in need of such a tool, this is something to uh, consider. And these are the results of the multilingual uh, resources which is creation. Uh, they are available from the Italian Clarion Center, but they're also available, uh, as I already showed, from the SSH Vocabulary Commons platform and findable through the SSH Open Marketplace. So this is the end of my presentation. Uh, I will stop sharing and I hope we can still discuss. Yeah, of bit. course we have. Thank you, thank you very much, Dan, for this very interesting and uh, stimulating presentation about the work that you have done in SOC, and it was really, really interesting. So I think that we can now move on with the questions that uh, we have. Uh, I think that we can keep the. Uh, you know, keep the questions with which came first, you can ask them. So uh, I think the first two questions are for Nico. Uh, how to best uh, match existing non-standardized data with vocabularies? Well, um, I would ask in what context actually. Um, I mean that we cannot match uh, non standardized terms uh, of uh, natural language, for example, uh, but uh, we can use uh, uh, a published vocabulary as it is, uh, or through its API, or uh, through the, down the downloading um, facility. But uh, uh, this this kind of uh, this kind of vocabulary is not in uh, it's not it's uh, in uh, it's not for uh, for matching uh, natural language terms. Uh, we do not parse language. Uh, this is not the case uh, uh, in this kind of uh, uh, implementation. If I answer the question, I don't know. And uh, what about homonyms? Uh, homonyms is a, a, a type of a special relationship uh, that uh, is not applicable in this uh, specific vocabulary, but is applicable in other vocabularies. Uh, for example, in, uh, in language vocabularies where we have lemmas and homonyms and but yes, it, it could be uh, an object property in, in another vocabulary. Okay, so there is a question, I think that for me, what instructions did we provide to uh, the people curating the multilingual concepts? Uh, well, they were, in fact, they were not uh, concrete instructions, but uh, the instructions they say was that uh, people that were experts in uh, SSH, SSH researchers and 
uh, librarians and uh, information societies were involved in teams which uh, made uh, this uh, this validation that validate these uh, translations. So it's uh, human expertise that we cannot escape as done very nicely put it and probably this is for good I don't know if it is for good or bad but we cannot escape human expertise and this is uh, with this I answer another question uh, which was posed later if we uh, use also automatic scoring of the translation no we used only the the, the human validation now regarding a question another question from uh, Tobias uh, the, the the Go triple vocabulary is an independent one. It is not. We use the the LCSH as a base for uh, creating, you know, the the Go triple vocabulary, but it's not directly related to it. But also the 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 Go triple vocabulary is not a static one. It's going to change. It, it will be uh, updated. Well, if okay. we offer an API. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, please. Yes, we do offer an API, but for for the reason I uh, I just mentioned, just to uh, to use the vocabulary from uh, the semantics platform uh, through an API, of course, uh, or uh, just through the download uh, the downloading facility, um, and not for uh, we do not match vocabularies with uh, any given natural language. Um, Dan has raised mm. uh, his hand. Mm -hmm. I wanted to react from when you said we do not offer an API or at least an API only internally, I suspect. So we would be happy to also host the triple vocabulary in the vocabulary commons platform. Mm -hmm. And uh, in, in that case, we you could offer this Cosmos API, of course, to, to access the information. Yeah, this is, this is something that we have discussed and we will uh, have a decision, you know, made in the near, okay. in the near future. So there is a question about the, the licenses. Um, well, I don't know if... I'm not really but, very... Um, yeah, I'm not an expert in this uh, either. Expert in this, but... Uh, uh, the only thing I know is that the vocabulary is uh, is distributed under the CC by four. Um, I think that's because we uh, we too used uh, other authorities to to create it. So a good practice in vocabularies is to uh, to refer to uh, to the authority that create uh, vocabulary. Uh, because uh, that is why vocabulary is uh, authoritative and uh, good practice to use. When it's totally free, you don't know uh, you don't know exactly uh, what your limits or you can do uh, anything with it. Uh, but uh, within within the framework of link of the data, uh, CC by four is. Uh, uh, a very common uh, practice. Danny, would you like to comment something or this? I don't know if you have seen the question. It's about it's, uh, uh, the license uh, for the for yeah, yeah, it's, it is addressed to me and uh, Nikos, of course, but I don't know if you want to. Yeah, well, to comment. I can I can, I can tell that when we created the uh, what was it the data stewardship. Uh, vocabulary, we had a, a little problem in the sense that we reused definitions from ISO standards. And uh, this is a bit uh, difficult uh, because normally uh, the ISO standards, uh, you, cannot, you cannot use them. Uh, let's say you cannot uh, distribute them. Uh, you have to pay for them, etc. cetera. But uh, in, 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 let's say, a um, discussion with people from uh, the ISO office in Germany, we found out we could cite 
uh, their terminology because they have a very interesting terminology database. And if you look for, an, let's say, a definition of a concept, you can use that database. And But you, you also want to use that in, in your documents, right? So under which conditions can you do that? And they told us you can do that, uh, uh, let's say, for non-commercial use. So NC, NC mm. should be uh, added added to that and uh, you should be uh, clearly marking that it comes from uh, their database but it is something to to watch uh, if you use uh, because in vocabularies you're able to point to all kinds of other registries and copy uh, definitions etc and you have to check where where it actually comes from uh, jan could you permit uh yes please yes could you permit tobias uh, to uh, to speak at the open it's in the last uh, question in the q and a section oh hello can, can you hear me yeah yeah um just a few details about my question i mean we have this uh, project we we try to aggregate data from different sources to to make it findable and uh, we need to normalize things so to make them comparable. And we have a problem. We have a lot of uh, keywords that are not normalized at all in four different languages. And uh, I thought if, if I wanted to use a vocabulary like yours, um, well, the only thing I have in data is some, some natural language terms. So somehow I need to find the concept so I can actually store an IRI instead of a term. That, that's the idea. And then I could, I could browse for all the records that are related to a specific IRI, and then we'll find uh, the connections. Yes, uh, that's why I meant, uh, that's what I meant before. Uh, the vocabulary is, uh, is usable as it is. Uh, it cannot perform uh, string matches with uh, your natural language keywords, unfortunately. But uh, it's um, it's a plan for implementation, of course. But as it is, the vocabulary cannot do that. Uh, you can use it uh, uh, as a down downloadable facility uh, or as an AP as an API from semantic uh, facility but not as a string matching uh, and linkage for li natural languages, uh, uh, concepts and terms. Uh, sorry, and, and what about this, this Cosmos uh, service that you mentioned? Maybe I didn't get that properly. Would that be usable with your um, vocabulary or would that be useful only with SCOS? Vocabulary. Uh, I I tested the triple vocabulary, uh, depositing it in my own uh, Cosmos instance, and it worked almost without any changes. But uh, I don't think Cosmo, this Cosmos software will help you anyway in matching things. It's a publication tool. It offers an API so that you uh, can access the content. Uh, but I thought you were looking for a different type of tool of match, matching concepts. Or I mean, wrong. the thing is just that, uh, you know, if, if you aggregate like three or four different projects, they all have their, their own way of, 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 of keywording. Yeah. And most likely they're not, they're not comparable. I mean, if, if you just did a string search, you wouldn't find any interesting connections. Mm -hmm. This is why I thought about an automated process of, you know, normalizing each project when, when importing it. So then you have like uh, comparable, comparable things to look for. Yeah, those Cosmos could only be interesting for you then as a vocabulary repository where you can, uh, let's say, if you, if you have uh, analyzed your material and have come to different uh, set of different vocabularies, you can host them there and easily create uh, links be, uh, between them. Uh, but it, it does not give you a, let's say, a processing option 
by which you can uh, uh, replace one term by another term. But maybe I'm not completely understanding you. No, no, I think you, you, you um, this is more or less what I'm looking for. I mean, uh, Cosmos is quite easy to use and to set up. Okay, because I mean, we have we have a large amount of existing data, which we impossibly could could uh, process manually. So this is why we need some automated ways of doing it. I think we have two more questions. Uh, what is the recommended uh, recommended way to handle cases where a term has different meanings in different disciplines? Is there a way to specify the scientific context in which the term is used? How can context be coordinated across multiple vocabularies? Well, yes, I understand the question, but uh, we did not, um, as far as I know, uh, the project did not uh, intend to to get so specifically in uh, uh, in the multi meaning uh, thing. Uh, it is a scientific vocabulary, and uh, each term has uh, a very um, specific, uh, contextually uh, speaking, uh, a very specific uh, meaning. Is that right, Heraclis? So history is, uh, you know, is the the, uh, the scientific discipline, or uh, uh, do, do uh, have we um, have we met uh, cases where um, ambiguity uh, occurred, or? Um. Yeah, but uh, the the publications are enriched with. Uh, uh with links that uh, as i said the presentation that will help the disambiguation of the term so that uh, their semantic interoperability is increased so a, a, a link is attributed to to the publication so and so there is this uh disambiguation uh, there is another uri let's say for polymorphism in uh the uh, computer science and in uh, biology if uh, let's say for an example, there is no computer science in SSH in a gold triple vocabulary because it's not an SSH discipline. But uh, uh, this is, uh, you know, uh, something that has been done. I don't know if I understand the, the question correctly. I think it's what you said. Uh, it's um, w when uh, a URI refers to a specific term, then it's uh, the meaning of that specific term and mm -hmm. nothing more. So can I ask, uh, as a moderator, I think I have the right to ask one final question before we move to our survey. Please stay with us for a few more minutes. It's nice for us to answer this uh, uh, survey. It takes no more than five minutes. So I would like to, to ask Dan how realistic is the, the reusability of, of vocabularies across disciplines in the SSH, but outside outside the SSH too. I mean, there is need for specificity versus uh, fragmentation. Yeah, I, I think it's a relevant question. Yeah. And uh, you get different answers from uh, different people. Um, it's, it shows, of course, we all want to share. Nobody wants to, well, some people want to invent, uh, invent their own <laughs> wheel. Uh, but uh, yeah, there is the, the if, you, if you use something existing, you enhance, intero you promote interoperability, you uh, make it more easy for your data to be integrated with other data. On the other hand, you might have the idea that if I call this piece of data in with a specific concept, then I'm making a mistake. It's 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 close but not exact. So uh, people, uh, researchers, are tempted to still create their own uh, concept there. This is uh, a difficult thing. 
in Clarin, we have we 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 have a metadata infrastructure, which leaves the um, researchers uh, allows them to in fact create their own metadata schema if they put in some effort. Many have many have done so. So there is a proliferation of of things. And you afterwards looking back, you think, well, if I would have been a bit more strict uh, there, interoperability would have been more easy now. We would have had a more easy situation. The same with the vocabularies, of course. That's why I think we need to be provide the community with, uh, let's say, good tools that they can look for vocabularies that fit them. Often they invent something because they don't know <laughs> something already exists. And that's a situation that you want to avoid. Thank you. Thank you very much for, for your answer. So uh, let's move to our um, survey. Let me share my screen. So I will leave uh, its answer for, I think, one minute, let's say, so that you can answer. Okay, thank you for staying. I can see already 19 people have answered. Mm -hmm. Thanks a lot. Okay, I'll just wait a little bit more for people to answer. Okay, next question. The training session met my expectations. So here again, I'm gonna wait for a minute. Thanks a lot to the speakers for the interesting mm. training session. Mm. And uh, yeah. we'll put the slides and presentations and the recording available on, uh, on the project website. Okay. I'll move on to the next no. question. Yeah? Yes, of course. Diana, I want to thank you very much, especially, you know, because you are not a member of the Triple Project or, uh, and Nikos, of course, because Nikos is neither a member of the Triple Project either. So thank you very much, both of you yeah. for. You're welcome. Um, one request. Uh, so we would welcome. like to, uh, let's say, invite you. I did already invite you to join us in the vocabulary comments. Uh, your project still has some time to go. So you could perhaps, uh, let's say, make this also part of your of your project to, uh, to have, for instance, the triple vocabulary available through the uh, vocabulary Commons Cosmos instance. It would, uh, I think, strengthen uh, the case for uh, such a common um, platform. And uh, yeah. Would yeah. illustrate our collaboration. Yeah, uh, I think this is very, uh, very interesting. It's something that is needed, I think, and uh, we will discuss it further in the in the future. And thank you very much for your invitation. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Bye bye. 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 Thank you very much. I guess we have Thank no more much. questions from the audience, mm. unless you had last ones to ask here. Well, uh, but we're already running you. a bit late. Yeah, thank you all very much for participating. Uh, we hope all that this was an interesting um, webinar and hope we see you soon in some other event that we will organize. Thank you very much. Have a nice afternoon. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.